fighting with the microphone. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Blessed. Blessed and highly favored. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. <laughs> Turn to your name and say, you got a choice. <laughs> if you want to be miserable, don't tell nobody you know Jesus, because he's not miserable. Glory. Grab your swords tonight. We're going to kick some butt. Hallelujah. Would you turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 6? Yeah. Is everybody there? And Jesus said to the most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Man, he must have freaked these people out. He said, whoever, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood is eternal life, and I will raise him up the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Of course, his flesh represented the word, and his blood represented the spirit. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. That is a powerful statement. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the mamma, manna, manna, and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life, and the flesh profits Nothing. Nada. The words that I speak to you are what? Spirit. And they are what? Life. The words that he speaks to us are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were and who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been what? Granted to him by my father. So you're not here tonight unless you've been drawn by the father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Why? Because they lacked understanding. And I want you to grab hold of something. One of the things they lacked understanding was the mission. Everyone say the mission. the mission. Then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. See, there is a requirement to fulfill the mission. He rescued you and me. The requirement to fulfill the mission is to eat his word and drink his spirit. In other words, if we do not live out of the word of God. See, so many people can quote it, but don't live it. You and I must live out of the word of God. Everything that we do and all decisions must be lined up with the word of God. If you're not living out of the word of God, you cannot fulfill the mission. Is everybody okay? Without living out of the word of God, remember he says, my words are life and they are spirit. I speak spirit. So in this, by living out of the word of God, you're actually going to live in the spirit. Because you can only complete the mission in the spirit. You cannot complete the mission in the flesh. It's impossible. That's definitely mission impossible. Again, the mission is not accomplished by man's abilities, strengths, Intellect, accomplishments, uh, all kinds of things in the flesh. 
only in the spirit. I don't care if you're a marathon runner. I don't care if you can hold your breath for two hours underneath the water. <laughs> I don't care if you can bench 5,000 pounds. I don't care if you can whatever. It doesn't matter. All physical strength has nothing to do with the mission. Does everybody get this? Nothing to do with the mission. It has everything to fulfill the mission must be done in the spirit. That means you and I must live out of the word of God. Nothing else. Second Timothy chapter 4. You and I have been sent into this world. We were rescued to fulfill the mission. But see, so many times there's so much interruption. There's so much things that come against us. There's so much, we're hard pressed. There's so many things that we lose sight that we're alive today to fulfill the mission and nothing else. Verse 1, would you read it with me? 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Let me share with you. There are many who do not endure sound doctrine. If you are not living out of the word of God, you're not enduring sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, let me share this with you. You are living out of emotion or out of the word, one or the other. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. In other words, they try to run to a place that fulfills their desire. And they will turn their ears away from the truth, sound doctrine, and be turned aside to what? Fables. He said, but you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions. In other words, humble, you're gonna, there's going to be afflictions. There are things going to be things that come against you. You're going to go through trials. You're going to go through tribulations. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your mission. Fulfill your mission. Does everybody get this? We must live out of the word of God. Why? Because the word of God <laughs> is what's going to guide me and you. That's what we're going to compare everything in our life with, out of the word of God. Living out of the word of God to fulfill your mission. Everyone say, I'm called, I'm called. To, battle. to battle. Let me share with you. What I'm going to give you is the guideline to your mission. I'm called, I'm called. to battle. My purpose, My purpose is to destroy, to destroy. Satan's, kingdom. Satan's kingdom. My destiny, My destiny. is to infiltrate, infiltrate. The, world the world system and rescue the lost. Rescue the lost. That's the guideline to your mission. See, there will be those who reject, reject true doctrines and replace it with emotional doctrine, not able to fulfill the mission. And Matthew 5. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've gone through. It matters what you're doing now. What are you doing now? Oh, hallelujah. Matthew 5, verse 1. Are you ready? And he seen the multitudes, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him and they, he opened his mouth and taught them. He did what? The mission is not, look at, there is training for the mission. Amen. He taught them saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. 
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Whoa. So how are you going to maintain a pure heart? You must remove all bitterness. You must forgive. Why? You must live out of the word of God. That's the only way you will maintain a pure heart. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hey, listen, you're all going to be persecuted for righteousness sake. Amen. But you're also going to be persecuted for sin. Hello. Things we've done in our past. Amen. Amen. Believe me, my family, after I got saved, was still like, they were waiting for me to fall. <laughs> they didn't think I was going to change. They didn't believe I was a new creation in Christ. I knew, but they didn't. See, they were still holding me according to my past. But the Lord says you're a new creation in Christ. But if you still have closets of your past that are still filled with garbage that it hasn't been emptied out yet and thrown away, it's going to catch up to you. Amen. Verse 11. Blessed are you when they, revile, when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. For whose sake? His sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing, but then thrown out and trampled under the foot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and give its light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to what? Fulfill. For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass away from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Racha, shall be in danger of counsel. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown in prison or in bondage. Surely I say to you, by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. And for it is more profitable for you <clears throat> that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into the hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, Cut it off and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast in hell. Now, it doesn't mean to literally cut it off. I want everybody to come in here with a patch on your eye and one hand. All right. 31. Furthermore, it has been said, 
Whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. Whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it is said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, nor for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swell by your head before you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes and your no be no. Whatever more than these is from the evil one. And have you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other him to also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. <laughs> Give to him who asks you and from him who wants to borrow from you. Do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be my sons and daughters for you are Father in heaven. For he makes his sun shine on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brother only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect. Everyone say perfect. Just as your father is in heaven is perfect. Now, that is so powerful. Literally powerful. Because living out of the word of God, not the flesh. The word says man shall, live by, shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. If not living out of the word, you're living out of the soulish emotional, and the flesh. See, all of these things are telling us this is what we must live on. See, but so many times we lose sight of what we're supposed to be living out of. And we begin to live out of how we feel. We begin to live out of offense. We begin to live out of bitterness. We begin to live out of all kinds of hurts. All of these things. We begin to live out of these things. And it brings contamination to us. And we cannot fulfill the mission. Look at this. The enemy's ploy is to come to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Let me share with you. The enemy's focus is to remove the mission from you and place you in its place. That's his mission. Does everybody get it? That's the enemy's mission. 2 Timothy 2. Second Timothy chapter two. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. In verse one. The mission is your life. See, living in the kingdom is a life. It's a new life. It's a way of life. This is the way it is. See, so many people want to live in the kingdom but still live their way. It isn't going to work. You'll never fulfill the mission. In verse 1, would you read it with me? You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Hallelujah. You therefore must what? Endure. endure. Everyone say endure. endure. Hardship. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Why? Because we live out of the word of God. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also if anyone competes in athletics. He is not crowned unless he competes according to the what? Rules or according to what? The word of God. Oh, hallelujah. 
The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. And may the Lord give you what? Understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of God, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Wow. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remember them to, of these things. Remember them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit to the ruin of the hearers. But be diligent to present yourself a proof to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why? Because living out of the word of God is essential. But shun profane and idle babbling, for they will increase the more ungodliness. And their message will spread like cancer, Hymenaeus and Philetus are of this sort who has strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having the seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. See, we have to be careful about the entanglements of the world, or what we call the flesh, or the soul, the emotional arena. Because it'll entangle us. Flesh steps out. When we go into the flesh, we step out of the mission. Living out of the word is the only thing that allows me and you to, to see. In this area, as we live out of the word of God, now we begin to see what God sees. If we do not live out of the word of God, we do not see what God sees. And that is one of the goals of the Holy Spirit. So that we live out of the word and we see what God sees. Not what man sees. Not what the emotions see. Not what feelings see. Amen. Not what the world says to see. But what God sees. Because he sees things totally different than what the carnal sees. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. James chapter 1. James 1, verse 2, my brethren, count it all. Count it all what? <laughs> count it all what? Woohoo! Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Anybody going through various trials? Don't raise your hands. Okay, what are these various trials for? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, which is endurance. Amen? But let this patience have its what? Perfect work. See, God's trying to get us to a place where we begin to perfect these areas. Why? So we stop thinking worst first. So we stop thinking and seeing according to what is going on physically and start looking spiritually. What's the influence? So that we live to fulfill the mission, which is his will and his desires and not our own. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be what? Perfect and what? Complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, hello, let him ask of God who gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be what? It will be given to him. See, this, is, this testing is to cause me and you to grow. God tests us for growth, maturity. He brings self-examination. It maintains us. The more we grow, the more we fall into the mission. 
It's a place. It's a, a, a position. When, when, that's why we must ask God's wisdom all the time because wisdom allows you to see things through the physical. It allows you to see things through the what? Physical. It actually allows you to see things through the physical flesh, the battle, into the spiritual battle. See, one of the things the enemy wants to do is keep you blinded from what's the influence. It says, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that person suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all of his ways. Ooh. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field, he will what? He will what? He will pass away. So listen, God is going to test us. He's going to test us. Why? Because he's trying to pure us to fulfill the mission. Look at the testing Jesus had to go through to fulfill the mission. Well, what makes you think you ain't going to go through the same thing? Again, this is life. We have stepped, when he accepted, he offered us, he rescued me and you to fulfill the mission. The mission is the life. This is our, what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to fulfill the mission. It should be everything to you. No matter what's going on, you maintain to fulfill the mission. No matter what's happening, the mission is vital. It's everything. Luke 14. Hallelujah. 14.25. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it, please. Now great multitudes went up with him, and he turned and said to them all, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, his mother, his wife, his children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. I want you to understand that only disciples can fulfill the mission. No one else can fulfill the mission. Only disciples. True disciples. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he is enough to finish it? Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him. Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. <clears throat> or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks condition of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if, it, if salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has an ear to hear let him what? Here. Only disciples can enter the mission. We must forsake all to fulfill the mission. All. Even our own lives. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Again, this is your life. This is our life. Salvation's Salvation was granted to me and you to fulfill the mission. We were rescued to fulfill the mission. You know, the mission is between you and God. Does everybody get it? Your mission to fulfill is between you and God. Everyone, your mission is between you and God. It isn't between you and your spouse. It isn't between you and your children. It isn't between you and your job. Does everybody get this? You have a fulfilled mission. Not that your spouse can't come along. Amen. But you fulfill that mission with or without your spouse. 
with or without your children. No matter what it takes, you live to fulfill your mission. That's that. These are the things that please the Father. Jesus was sent to the earth to fulfill the mission. He, in fact, he said it wasn't my, my deal. I've come to fulfill the will of God. That's why you and I are alive today. Not to fill, fulfill our mission, his mission, what we call now ours. Amen? Because we share that same mission. So it doesn't matter what's going on around you. You must fulfill the mission unto death. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It doesn't matter what your family says. You fulfill the mission. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 26, please. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.26. For you see your mission, right? <laughs> Brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called to what? Fulfill the mission. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and the righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Listen, we are elected, chosen by God to fulfill his will in the realm, in this realm. You and I were sent from the presence of the Lord to fulfill an eternal mission in a temporary realm. That's why he gives us the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is what? In heaven. That was a mission statement. Romans 8. It doesn't mean you're going to become a missionary. Hello. And the worst thing that could happen to us is to be successful in the wrong assignment. Missions are established, they're passed down. They're passed down. Things are passed down. God puts us in places for training. They're passed down. In other words, vision is passed. And God says, my people perish because of lack of vision. It's very hard to catch vision if you're going to four churches every week. It's very difficult because you're picking up. It brings confusion. That's how you're getting this head knowledge. But you're not getting vision. Does everybody understand that? Is everybody okay? Amen. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore what? No. Now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. What is the perfect law of the spirit of Christ? Deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow. Amen. <laughs> Verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the what? Righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. In who? In us. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Again, can you fulfill the mission according to the flesh? 
No, only according to the Spirit. So if it's according to the Spirit, then you must fulfill the perfect law, which is deny yourself. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh and themselves. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit in Christ. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Well, look at this. For it is not subject to the law of God. What's the law of God? What's the perfect law of God? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. See, your carnal mind can't do that, so you can get all the intellect in your head you want and still not have vision. Are we okay? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it's not subject to the spiritual law, the perfect law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot what? Cannot please God. Why can they not please God? Because they can't fulfill the what? Mission. The perfect law, the spirit of life is to deny yourself <laughs> and every move in the temporary realm. To deny yourself of everything in this temporary realm. And take the sword of the cross, see through the physical into the spiritual, and battle to follow the head of your mission who leads you into battle of victory and spoils of blessings with a harvest of souls enlarging the kingdom of God. Do I need to repeat that? Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> All right, are you ready? The perfect law of the spirit of life is to deny yourself at every move in the temporary realm. And to take the sword of the cross Seeing through the physical into the spiritual. It is the sword of the cross. Why? Because when you pull the cross out of the ground, it turns into a sword. And battle to follow the head of your mission. And who is the head of your mission? Jesus. Who leads you into battles of victory. He will lead you into the battle of victory. You go into battle in your flesh, you're going to lose. And what he does is then he gathers, he releases, because after you go into the battle of, there, there, of victory, there's always spoil. Always spoil in victory battles. God always releases something. Amen. See, but if you go into flesh, you lose something. Or spoils of blessing are released, and a harvest of souls is increased. So everybody got it? Spoils of blessings are released and a harvest of soul will increase enlarging the kingdom of God. Mission impossible is in the flesh, but mission possible is in the spirit. Many are not awakened to the mission. They're not awakened to it. Not able to perfect the first requirement of the perfect law of the Spirit. In Psalms 11. Psalm 11, the mission. Living out of the Word, right? Honor your mother and your father. Living out of the word. Bless those who persecute you. Forgive and bless. Amen. They may hang up on you, but you do what you're supposed to do. Amen. <laughs> I've had that happen to me. Some dork on the phone. <laughs> Give me all kind of grief. I said, look at man, I forgive you and I bless you. And I hung up. No, yeah, I hung up. I didn't want to hear no more. Man, that dude kept texting me. <laughs> he didn't like that. Hallelujah. Then I texted him back, told him he ought to thank God I'm not who I used to be. 
lead have been, never mind. Anyways. <laughs> he would have been really blessed. <laughs> All over the place. Anyways. Uh, Psalm 11. Is everybody there? Verse 1. In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly at the what? Upright and hard. Well, the snap, man. That means you're not going to see it when it happens. But you're going to feel it. <laughs> Whoa! And how does that happen? Hurt, offense, rejection, amen? All of those things are nothing but the enemy who's shooting secretly at you. See, but the enemy wants you to look in the physical at the people or the circumstance and doesn't want you to see through. Why? Because if you do it through the physical, it slows you down or moves you out of the mission. That they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. Hello. The Lord tests the what? The righteous. Let me tell you, God does not come up to you to test you. He just steps back and lets the enemy test you. And then he waits. He wants to know if you're going to see what he sees. He wants to know if you're going to live out of the word. Or if you're going to live out of the soul, out of the emotion. This is how we advance. This is how we earn trust. Or this is how we lose it. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain coals, fire and brimstone and, fu and burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord loves, the Lord is righteous and he loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. His countenance. Wow. One thing we don't want to do is grieve the spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Listen, the Lord tests, <laughs> he tests us, uh, wants to know if we perfected the law, <laughs> the perfect law. Of the spirit of life. He wants to know if we're living that. See, to the perfect law of the spirit of life, to deny yourself, pick up the cross and battle and follow, is living out of the word of God. He wants to know. He's going to test us on that. He wants to know whether we're going to react or respond. He wants to know and test our boundaries, or whether we're going over the boundaries or staying in them. He's going to test our motive. He's going to test our attitude. He's going to test our desires. He's going to test our decision making. He's going to test our associations. He's going to test our priorities, what we have in order. He's going to test our discernment. He's going to test our tongue, our words. He's going to test to see if we're obedient. He's going to see if we're test our surrender. He's going to test to see if we trust. He's going to test what we agree with, our agreements. He's going to test your first words. He's going to test your first love. He's going to test our maturity level, our endurance, our submission, our humility. He's going to test our fight. He's going to test our faithfulness and our vows, our commitments, our stability, our consistency, and death to the world. That's a lot of testing, isn't it? It's every single day. He wants to know if you're going to live out of his word. This is the life that you and I have accepted. By accepting the mission, you've accepting to live out of this word of God and not out of our souls, our emotions, our experiences. Does everybody get it? Let's go a little further. Romans 10.
<laughs> Some of them go, man, I can't make that. No, we can't. We can't do it in our own strength. Amen? Does everybody get it? And we're going to make mistakes. But it's for training. Glory. Romans 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be what? Saved. <laughs> for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, seeking to establish their own righteousness, this is called self-righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. In other words, they're not seeing what God sees. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to what? Will not be put to what? Will not be put to shame. Self-righteousness is a mindset. It's a stronghold. Self-righteousness leans on its own works, abilities, accomplishments. It is an attitude of entitlement. Does everybody get this? This is what self-righteousness is. It's an attitude of entitlement. It builds walls of defense, which is offense. It's molded by bitterness and unforgiveness, protected by pride. Not able to enter the mission. It keeps the closet doors of the past locked. Of emotional past locked not allowing God to expose or remove or heal. I want to say this again because I think it's very important. This is a Holy Ghost definition of self-righteousness, let me tell you. It is a mindset. It's a stronghold. It leans on its own works, abilities, and accomplishments with an attitude of entitlement. It builds walls of defense, which is offense. It's molded by bitterness and unforgiveness. It's protected by pride. It's not able to enter the mission. It's, it, it keeps the closet doors of emotional past locked. Not allowing God to expose or remove or heal. 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? The mission. Again, the mission is our life. First John chapter 3 and verse 1. Somebody there. Yes. Let's speak it. Beloved, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should what? Be called children of God. Therefore, the word does not, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And anyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin, and whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. 
Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. Now, can you become righteous? Can you practice righteousness by living out of your emotions? Or by according to the world's standard, human precepts? No, only the word of God. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So there's that area where we practice righteousness. Practicing righteousness means we live out of the word of God. Amen? Other than that, it's self-righteous. Romans 8, verse 28. The mission. Many places are losing the mission, the vision of the mission. There's more entertainment. They're allowing sin to reign. If everybody was like-minded in the mission, we'd be more penetrating than we are now. Because it takes unity. Romans 8, 28. Is everybody there? Let's speak it, please. For we know that all things work to the good for God, to the good for, that work together for the good to those who what? Love God to those who are called according to his purpose. It, being called according to his purpose is to be invited into the mission. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called, whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also what? Glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, what? Who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Thank you, Jesus. Who shall, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. John chapter 5. Oh, it's good to hear the pages flying on a Thursday night. The mission. Everyone say, the mission Amen. is my life. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 24, John 5, 24. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. Most assuredly I say to you, who hears my word and believes in him who sent me is everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death 
into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, and so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will but the will of the Father who sent me. That's the mission. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he, which he witnesses of me is true. You have sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Yet I do not receive testimony from man, but I say these things, that you may be what? Be saved. And I'm going to close at Revelation chapter 2. If Jesus is your life, then the mission is your life. Amen? Amen? The Lord is the mission, and the mission is the Lord's. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have per per persevered and have patience, and have labored for my namesake, and have not become weary. Never, nevertheless, this I have against you, that you have left your what? Your first love, which is what? Him. Remember, he's the first love. But because he's your first love, the mission is your life. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works. That's the mission. The first works is the mission. Does everybody get it? He's the first love, and the first works is known as the mission. Or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from, what it, from its place, unless you what? Repent. In other words, and turn back to the what? The mission and your first love. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise of God. Wow. That is a reward. Amen. Amen. The mission is our life. That's why we were rescued, to fulfill the mission. Amen. It must be priority. That is our life. Let us not be swayed, misled, or deceived. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed that has been parted in us be protected by the blood. Let it penetrate every part of our being. Penetrate our hearts, our minds, our emotions, our conscience, subconscious, and take possession of every part of our being in the name of Jesus that we may fulfill the mission and bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>